Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 14. All right, so question one is a basic arithmetic question that looks at fractions. Maria spends one third of her take home pay on rent and one fourth on her student loans. What fraction of her take home pay does she have after paying for these two items? Okay, so this question involves you adding two fractions that have two different denominators. So remember, the rule when you add and subtract fractions is that the denominator, which is the number at the bottom, has to be the same in both fractions. Okay, so step one would be to find a common denominator between these two fractions. We know that for rent, she's paying uh, one third of her take home pay. So to find a common denominator between one third and one fourth, we would multiply this fraction by four divided by four. That gives us four divided by 12. And then if we look at the student loans, we said that she pays one fourth of uh, her take home pay on student loans. So how do we get a common denominator for this? Well, we would multiply the top number, the numerator, and the bottom number, the denominator, by three. And that would give us three over 12. So now you can see that both fractions have the same number at the bottom, okay? They have a common denominator. So step two is now to add these two fractions um, and find out how much she spends on rate, rent and loans. So we said she spent four divided by 12 on rent plus three over 12 on student loans. That gives us seven twelfths. And the question asks you, what fraction of her take home pay does she have left after paying for these two items? So here, what you have to do is subtract that number that you just got from her total pay. Now, in the question, they're not giving us their total pay, so we don't know what it is. So we would have to assume it's like 100% or 100 or a whole number, right? A one. Um, because our common den denominator was 12, and we said that in order to add or subtract fractions, they have to have the same common denominator, we're going to make the take-home pay 12 over 12, okay? Which is the same as 1 or 100, if you like. Okay, so 12 divided over 12 minus 7 over 12, which is what we found in the previous uh, step, would give us 5 twelfths. Okay, so that is the amount that she has remaining after paying for rent and student loans. So the correct answer would be D. All right, so question two is uh, from the applied arithmetic section, and here we're looking at scientific notation. Okay, so sometimes they ask you to convert a number to scientific notation or the other way around. Okay, in this case, they give you 5.0282 times 10 to the fourth power. So step one is to look at that exponent. And specifically what you're looking at is the sign of the exponent. Why? Well, because this is going to tell you to which side you're going to move your decimal point. So if the sign were negative, that means you would have to move your decimal point to the left. In this case, it is positive. So we are moving the decimal point to the right. And because the exponent is 10 to the fourth, uh, that means we're moving our decimal point to the right four times. So that would be one, two, three, and four. Okay, if you now Trans move that decimal point, you end up with 50,282, which is answer D. Question three is an algebra question. Finn has 600 baseball cards, the same amount that Julia and Rick have combined. Julia has four times as many cards as Rick has. How many cards does Rick have? All right, so if we translate this problem first to English, we it's telling us that Rick, excuse me, uh, Finn, has the same amount of cards as Rick and Julia combined. Okay, so that would be your equation in English, so to speak. And we know that Finn has 600 baseball cards. 
We don't know how many cards Rick has, so we are going to put an X for him. And we also don't know how many cards Julia has, but we do know, it tells us in the question, that he, she has four times as many cards as Rick has. So we would write a 4X for Julia. Okay, so your equation would be 600 is equal to X plus 4X. And then if you go ahead and uh, kind of clean that up, it would be 600 is equal to 5x. Now all you have to do is divide both sides of your equation by 5. On your right side, that would cancel out, leaving you with x is equal to 120. Okay, so this is the amount of cards that Rick has. Algebra question uh, number 4. And this is an inequality question, so it asks you to solve this inequality. Okay, so this is uh, pretty straightforward, actually. What you would do is, uh, first of all, in order to isolate that x, you have to um, get rid of that 7. So since you're subtracting 7, what you would do is add 7 on the left side. Remember that you always have to do the same thing to the right side, so you would add a 7 on the right side. Then um, on the left side, those two 7s are going to cancel out, because 7 minus 7 is 0 leaving you with 3x is more than 12. And all you have to do here is divide both sides by 3, like that, and that gives you 4 is more than, excuse me, x is 4 more than 4, which is letter C. All right, and the final question today is a geometry question that looks at the slope of a line. And they're asking you, what is the slope of a line that passes through the points 2, comma 6 and 4, comma 10? So what, is, what, are, what are these points that they're giving you? What are these numbers? Well, what they are, they're two points on the x line and two points on the y line. Okay, so the first number in each of these brackets corresponds to a point on the x line. So the first number, the 2, would be x1. And then the first number on the second um, bracket of numbers would be x2. And then um, if you look at the second number, so 4 in this case, that would be point 1 on the y line. And then 10 would be the second point on the y line. Okay, so if you remember, if you just remember this, then your life is going to be super simple. Okay, so always remember the first number is going to be a point on the x line, the second number is going to be a point on the y line. Okay, and now we have to remember what a slope is. So you may have heard of the slope as the rise over the run. So what this is telling you is how much a um, an, the angle, let's say, of a line changes um, through time, I guess. So, um, so how much it uh, changes um, vertically, okay, the rise or the y axis, and how much it changes horizontally or the x axis, okay. This is also known as the run. So, if we um, look at that, if you change that into mathematical language, uh, the rise would be y two minus y one, okay. How much that uh, line. Uh, angle along the y or vertical axis changes divided by the run. Okay, how much does it change horizontally or on the x axis? So all you have to do here is plug your numbers that you already labeled uh, before, and then on the top you would have 10 minus 4, and then in the bottom you would have 4 minus 2. That gives you 6 divided by 2, and your slope would be three, which is letter B. Okay, folks, I hope you found that useful. As always, stay positive and stay strong. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.